Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeez, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over and scoring our third FRQ Friday practice FRQ. If you wanna watch the video where I annotate or break down this practice FRQ and then write it, you can check out that suggested video up in the corner, then come back and score your FRQ with this video. Now our last video in the series was posted on the Friday before Christmas break started. So the submissions were pretty sparse, but there was one ape scholar who was working hard and honing his FRQ writing skills over that break. The ever reliable ape scholar Aiden submitted an FRQ once again for the third FRQ Friday in a row. And you know what they say, the ape scholar who writes FRQs over Christmas break gets the five. Okay, fine, nobody says that, but it is true. Now, if you're the new year's resolution type, go ahead and make yourself a resolution to write every FRQ Friday practice FRQ. Trust me, your July self will thank you when you log into AP Central to see your APES exam score. Then you can come back to the channel and leave a comment like one of these underneath a random video for an APE scholar next year to see and be inspired by. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here though. It's only January and we have tons of practice FRQs to get through still, including Aiden's. So let's get out that scoring guide and see how we did. As always, the scoring guide for this practice FRQ is down in the video description below, or you can just follow along on screen as I go through question by question. In part A, Aiden earns both points. The first for stating that in less developed countries, quote, forests are cleared for farming, and the second for describing, quote, government restrictions that limit the number of trees that one can cut. In part B, Aiden earns the identification point by stating that, quote, sediment and turbidity will increase. And he's really, really close to earning the explanation point here because he does state that soil is loosened and increased runoff leads to more sediments entering the stream. But there's a crucial detail he's left out and that is that specifically, it's the loss of root structure from these trees that's responsible for this increase in sediments. Now I wanna point out here that he did have enough detail for a describe level prompt, but explain level prompts often require a careful step-by-step -step walkthrough of a process rather than just simple cause, deforestation, and effect loose soil that enters the stream. Now in part C, Aiden gets back on track by earning two easy identify points by stating that forests serve as carbon reservoirs and also that they provide habitats for certain species. Now in part D, Aiden earns the identify point by stating that increased healthcare is a factor that increases life expectancy. He also goes on to earn the discussion point because he explains that life expectancy increases because, quote, vaccines and medicine prevent early deaths. Now in part E, Aiden does earn the identify point for listing increased women's education as his factor that could have contributed to a decrease in fertility rate. Now on the discussion point, he's super close, but I erred on the side of withholding this point, and I'll explain why. He does state that as education increases for women, they have, quote, less time to have children as they spend more time on their studies and careers. Now you can see that the scoring guide does list, quote, fewer children, but Aiden doesn't precisely link more time spent on studies and careers to fewer children over a woman's lifetime. When I dug into the student samples from the college board that did earn this point, both of them explicitly linked increased education to delaying having children, which is well known to leading to a woman having fewer children over her lifetime, or explicitly having less children as their careers progress. Again, without having been a reader on this exact question, it's impossible to say for sure whether or not Aiden would have earned this point, but as I've explained in previous FRQ Friday videos, I always err on the side of caution and withhold points that leave some ambiguity. And this is a great reminder of why it's so important to always ask yourself if you've circled back to the prompt and explicitly linked your answer to the question being asked, which in this case requires your factor to contribute to a decline in fertility rate, not just a decline in women's free time. If we wanna look at an example of a student who earned this point, we can see that they firmly established the connection between more financial success for women and the desire to have fewer children. This is a similar idea to Aiden's, but it's articulated more clearly, especially in the second sentence, where the student clearly indicates that women will see having a lot of children as interfering with their careers, causing them to have less children. Again, this is more precise than simply saying that they will have less time to have children. So even with my nitpicking on his final answer in question E, 
Aiden managed to earn an eight out of 10 on this FRQ. And what I wanna point out here is how efficient he was with his writing. He didn't write more than a few sentences for any single answer on this FRQ. He got straight to the point on his identify prompts, providing one simple, clear answer, but on his describe and discuss or explain prompts, he added that second or sometimes third layer of detail that's needed to earn those more complicated points. Now, earning an eight out of 10 on three straight FRQs on the actual exam is incredibly difficult to pull off, but if you can manage to do that, you'll be in phenomenal shape to earn a five on that exam in May. Now let's take a look at next week's practice FRQ, which comes to us from the 2016 exam and covers unit four and more specifically soil. On letter A, we start off with a describe prompt, which of course is going to require two layers of detail. And again, we wanna look after the describe prompt to see what do we actually have to describe. And in this case, the target of our FRQ or of our task verb here is two climate factors. So our answer must be two different climate factors and those factors have to affect the rate of soil formation. Now, given all of the FRQs that I have scored of this from my own student samples, I'm gonna put an asterisk by that word rate and try to give you a little extra help here. Now in part B, we have two super simple identify prompts here. Let's circle both of those to make sure we're just giving one simple layer of detail. We wanna make sure that we are identifying a specific biotic component that comes from the A horizon. And then we wanna identify a specific abiotic component that comes from the A horizon. Now in part C, we're gonna answer two different questions about nitrate levels found in drinking water. In letter C part one, we have an identify prompt. So of course, circle and write one above it. Now what we're identifying here, the target that comes after the task verb is an agricultural practice. And that practice has to lead to elevated nitrate levels in our groundwater. In part two, we have to go a little bit deeper. So we're gonna circle this and write a two above it for describe. We have to describe how that practice we identified above. So it must be a description of how the practice we identified above actually leads to these elevated nitrate levels in our groundwater. In letter D, we again have a two part question with our first part of letter D being an explain prompt where we have to explain a way that acid deposition onto soil can affect plant health. So I wanna slow down here and try to break this down a little bit. What we're actually explaining is the way or the method or the mechanism that acid deposition onto soil can affect plant health. So now that looks a little bit funky, but I really want you to focus on that mechanism in which acid deposition is actually affecting the plant health. And then in part two, we have a describe prompt and what we need to describe is a method, and that method has to be remediation of soil that has been affected by this acid deposition. So again, it looks weird here, but we wanna make sure what we're explaining in part one is a way that acid deposition can actually affect plant health, so how does it do that? And in part two, we're describing a method, and that method must remediate soil that's been affected by acid deposition. And finally, in part E, we have a describe, and what we're gonna to need to describe here is two ways, so again, I'm underlining that word way, which I want you to start to think of as a mechanism or a process in which climate change can degrade soil. So we have to make sure, again, that our basic answer is a way or a mechanism that climate change is degrading soil. All right, Ape Scholars, that was our fourth FRQ Friday prompt. And remember that these FRQs make up 40% of your exam score in May, and the only way to get better at them is to write and score as many practice FRQs as you can. So set yourself a 23 minute timer, write this soil practice FRQ, and then email or snail mail it to me to be scored in our next FRQ Friday video. Now, if you wanna brush up on your knowledge of soil before you write this practice FRQ, you can check out both of my videos covering that really important topic here. Or if you want more FRQ Friday practice videos, you can check out that whole playlist here. But whatever you watch next, make sure that you always remember to think like a mountain and write like a scholar.